Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. And today we're going to take a look at not applying light leak, but rather creating your very own custom light leaks. Now, I should mention there are some very organic ways to do this with a camera and with actual lights and things like that. We're not going to get into all of that. We'll save that for a, when we start doing more camera and photography related tutorials on the channel. We'll mix that kind of stuff and I think that'll be really helpful for a lot of people. But rather, this is going to be more creating these light leaks digitally and how you can do it right here, right now without any kind of equipment, just Photoshop. Um, and I think you're really going to like it. Now, if you enjoy this video and you want to support the channel, you want to support the video, whatever, pound the like button, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested, I know it's a big ask, but I do sell a course all about retouching images in Photoshop. If you pick up a copy of the course, you support the channel. Thank you very much. If you picked up a copy, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to download a bunch of free light leaks, there's a link down in the description. You can download a bunch of free light leaks as well. I forgot. Uh, you can go ahead and download those. They're on the site. They're on the blog. Have fun with them. Use them for whatever you want. No limitations. All right, so let's uh, enough with all of that nonsense. Let's move along here and talk about the light leak. So what does a light leak do? Well, we're working with a photo. We got it all retouched. We want to add a little more flair. Boom, we add a light leak. There's without the light leak. There is with the light leak. And this light leak was created completely in Photoshop. This is not one of those, you know, organic light leaks that I'm talking about. There's a ton of different ways to create these. I'm going to show you kind of how I begin creating them and then kind of spit out some ideas that might get your brain firing so you can go and create some for yourself and you can use them not just for photos they're great for photos but you can add them to add all kinds of flair to backgrounds of you know a design presentation for a logo design or a graphic or a you know a little piece of vector artwork or something you can use them for a lot of different stuff we're going to go file new and we're going to create a rather large document uh, i want to you want to go pretty big I'm just going to go with a fairly standard 4K, like 4096 by like 2160-ish size. Um, you could, if you if you know the resolution of your DSLR, you could just create specifically for that. You could create a little bit larger than that. Kind of the larger you create them, the better off you're going to be moving into the future. Uh, but it is also going to be a little bit more labor intensive and CPU intensive, I should say, to create them here and now. So let's go ahead and click create. And the first thing we need to do is make sure our background color is set to black. That's pretty important when it comes time to apply the light leaks. If I go back and show you this light leak here, uh, you can see here in the thumbnail, it's got a black background and we drop out the black background using the blend mode screen. Uh, if I just set this back to normal, you can see there's the light leak with the black background. We set it to screen. Voila, all the black goes away. That's why we like to create these over a black background. Next up, we're going to grab our brush tool. And this is just the way I like to do it. Maybe there's a way you like to do it, or maybe you'll find a way you like doing it uh, based upon this. But either way, have at it. Uh, I'm going to right click with my brush tool. And I think I'm going to go like 350 pixels on the size. I want to make sure my hardness is at 100%. All right. Next, I'm going to grab the brush panel here. So I'm going to just I hit this little icon right here, the little brush folder. And here I'm going to make sure shape dynamics is checked on. You can see there it is checked on. And over here, your size jitter may be at zero, maybe anywhere in between. We want to make sure this is at 100. Everything else set to zero minimum angle and roundness jitters all set to zero. All the rest of the stuff, none of that, don't need to worry about any of that. Next up, we're going to set the color or the blend mode, excuse me, of the brush to color dodge. And I'm going to set the overall opacity of the brush to 30%. This means that as I paint, the brush strokes are going to interact with each other and sort of make each other a little more explosive. But the fact that the opacity is at 30% means that there's going to be even more edges and more bits of a transparency for which the color dodge uh, will do all kinds of crazy things for us. So let's go ahead and create a new layer with a new layer icon. And we'll just call this, you know, colors. You don't even really have to name it because you'll probably never use the PSDs again. And then you can just come in. Well, let's open up our swatches panel here. And you can choose a basically whatever kind of color you want. In fact, this might be a good time to mention this coolers.co website, which is a really cool color generator. Uh, you can create all kinds of really fast, really cool color schemes. Start the generator and you can get a nice, uh, a nice color scheme generated because the best, the best light leaks I've found, they, they don't even really have to look natural, but if, uh, if they have a nice, gradation of colors that kind of match, it's going to look good. So here's our first color um, scheme. If we don't like it, hit the space bar key. It gives us another one and so on and so forth. And you can go all the way through until you get a, a set of colors that you like. And here, I kind of like this light blue and this dark blue and maybe a little bit of the orange. So let's choose export. I'm going to export it as a PNG here. And I'm just going to simply right click on this, choose copy image and jump back over to Photoshop. I'm going to paste it into Photoshop. 
grab my move tool. I'm just going to move it and hide it, you know, wherever, down here in the middle maybe. I can sample it. I can get to it. And we're going to have to create yet another new layer here because we kind of got sidetracked going and talking about coolers or colors or however you pronounce it. I'm going to name this layer whatever I darn well please if it lets me name it. There we go. Let's just name this leak. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. And notice our foreground color is still black. Background color is still white. But when you have the brush tool selected, you can always hold down your alter option key and just select and sample any color you like. So I can start with like a base of this, you know, heavier, darker blue and I can say you know what I want uh, a little bit of color coming in over on this side here and just go ahead and begin brushing multiple strokes that's the that's the name of the game here is multiple strokes and you can see how that color dodge mode is allowing all the edges to just interact with one another this is how we're gonna get more of like that natural sort of organic look if you will all right there we go that looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and choose the lighter blue something like that and we're gonna come in here and just really intensify things up in the corner don't mind it if it looks like my brush is jumping around. My tablet sometimes acts up a little bit, particularly when I'm recording, it seems. All right, there we go, something like that. And you can see how we're just getting this crazy effect, right? And it's all to do with the color dodge blend mode and our brush only at 30% opacity. Then I think, whoops, we're going to hold down our alter option key and grab this orange. And we're just going to give this kind of like an orange tinge. Not that Maybe not the entire light leak, but just some of it, all right? And we're going to go pretty intense with the yellowy orange coming out of it right there. All right, something kind of like that. Maybe we'll continue the orange up and over and maybe then put a little bit of orange down here as well. Just to really kind of let its presence be felt. I think I'm going to go back to the light blue here and just extend the light blue out a little bit there. All right, great. So basically you, you create sort of this colored pattern like that. And now it's where the fun part begins. You can do all sorts of things with this. We can do something as simple as a filter blur, Gaussian blur, and blur this. I mean, probably more than 10 pixels. We're probably going to go like 150 pixels and just get this crazy blurred color effect. Uh, I'm going to cancel that. We could go filter. We could go blur. We could go motion blur and we could blur this, you know, maybe on an, an angle coming out of that corner maybe not 2,000 pixels or you know what let's do 2,000 pixels I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay uh, and and it's really kind of dulled the effect so you might want to duplicate that layer commander control J commander control J a couple times and then select all those layers commander control E and merge them all together and you're gonna get one nice heavier uh, light leak effect I want to take a quick break here for a second as well and just let you guys know, as I mentioned in the open to the video, I am selling a course over on tutfit.com all about how to retouch images. If you pick up a copy of it, it's just a great way to support what we're doing here at Tutvid. We're moving into a new studio space soon. Kind of the, the style and tone of the videos is probably going to change a little bit, I think, for the better. But I'm always in tune with you guys, always reading the comments, everything like that. The whole point here is if you're looking to support the channel, go ahead and buy a copy of the course. The link appeared somewhere up there in the top corner, especially if you're watching this video on a YouTube. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. So we've we've got this all created here and we can take something like a motion blur to another level even by going filter, blur gallery and choosing something like the path blur. And the path blur is kind of cool because not only does it blur a little bit more, but we can add some real motion to our blurs. So I'm gonna just drag my points and then I'm gonna drag this middle point I'm going to pull it out this way, and I'm probably going to have to change the speed of the blur before you're really going to see a, a big difference. But I'm going to change the speed of the blur quite a bit, and you can see we're getting almost this swirl on our blur. It's really pretty cool. We can just hit OK, and it's going to apply that updated. It's, it's a very, very heavy effect, so it might take a second to apply, but you can see there we go. Now, just as a quick sort of preview of what this light leak would look like, I'm going to use the hotkey Command-Shift option, or that'd be Control-Shift-Alt and the letter E. And you can see it's going to merge all that to a new layer. I can take this merged layer, drag this over to this image, and I'm going to drop it in place. Don't worry, it's a 16-bit image, and it's an 8-bit light leak we just created. I'm going to drag this up above everything. I'm going to drag it up above everything. There we go. I'm going to shut off the original leak. You can see it, this light leak is smaller than the image to which we're applying it. No worries. We can go ahead and hit Edit, Free Transform, and just stretch it out a little bit if we need to. Something like that. Maybe make it a little bit... Uh, a little bit bigger. And because we haven't gone all the way to the edges, we really have a lot of latitude with which we can push and pull this effect and then simply set this to the blend mode of screen. And you can see all of that black gets knocked away and we're just left with this light leak. It's really pretty remarkable. And we could of course can adjust this if you just want a little bit coming through on the top, that's fine. And you can see here a lesson to be learned and something I do want to point out. Notice here at the top, we didn't take our color all the way over to the edge, right? We stopped before we got to the edge. So we can really push and pull this side to side as much as we want. We're a little stuck moving top to bottom because we started building that effect out on the bottom. See, if that wasn't there on the bottom, we could really pull this light leak up just like that if we wanted. Now what we would have to do is apply, you know, like a layer mask and take 
our brush and reset all the brush settings and everything. So just something to keep in mind when you're working with your own light leaks. Uh, but you can see, I mean, just very, very versatile uh, with the one that we created. I'm going to delete that. And of course, you can use all types of different effects. You can go with your radial blur. You can go with different, uh, dip, you can mix the Ga Gaussian blur and a motion blur, and eh, maybe not really, but mixing the motion blur and the path blur, or just straight up just using a path blur. You can make a, a lens flare that, or a, a light leak lens flare, whatever, that goes multiple directions and does all sorts of things. And you can also, by the way, create light leaks that are very disjointed. So we could do something that's just like uh, let's take the brush tool here and let's turn our colors back on. I'm going to just go with the orange here in this case. Let's say we create sort of a, a, a leak over here that's kind of something like that. I'm going to make my brush tool quite a bit larger. And we create like another big leak over here. And then we just create one that's like multiples down here or something. So we're getting just multiple, multiple bits of color and stuff. You know what, hold on, I'm going to set the blue to the inside part of this. So we go ahead and add some blue here along that side, and we're going to go with the blue over here and a little bit of blue up here, just, just for continuity's sake. And then I would go, and let's do, go with the simple blur, Gaussian blur, 150 pixels is what we'll do here, I think. Yeah, something like that. Hit OK. And then we would just merge all these two new layer. Let's hide our colors, swatches there. Just Command, Shift, Option, or Control, Shift, Alt, and the letter E. There we go. We could drag this over and apply this to our image, yeah, whatever, we don't care. We're gonna hide that. I'm gonna Command or Control T to scale this up. And with a light leak like this, we could just come, you know, halfway down the image like this, set it to screen, and you kind of have this light leak that's, you know, blotchy around the image, kind of like you would get, you know, shooting through a camera lens, uh, especially if there's that light hitting just the edge of your lens, just the way it does to create those flares, where you kind of get that dappled light across your lens. And of course, you can play with the opacity as well. The whole point is, there's a ton of different options here uh, in terms of what you can do. But if you understand the base, create artwork, create colors, blur them all together over a black background, and then save those out as JPEGs, and you can build yourself an entire library of light leaks. And oh, by the way, if you noticed, with my original light leak here, it originally was this yellow and pink color, but I clipped a hue saturation adjustment layer to it. Let me just show you how to do that real quick. So let's apply this light leak, and let's say we look at it, we say, you know what, the yellow is not really doing it for me. I can throw a hue saturation adjustment layer here, use the hotkey Command Option G, that'd be Control Alt G on the PC, and then just swing the hue slider around. And there, what about that? Like a, a reddish, tealish color. That's kind of cool. If we don't quite like that, we can go with like a purple and green or blue and you know, all kinds of different colors. You get all sorts of things that you can open this up to. And you can, of course, well, you probably don't want to adjust brightness to make it brighter, but you can make it darker and make it disappear a little bit more. You, don't really, you really don't want to make it brighter because it's going to make that black not black, and therefore it's going to start showing up in your image. But you can always increase the saturation if you don't think it's saturated enough, or desaturate if it's too saturated. The hue saturation adjustment layer clipped to a light leak can be a really, really powerful thing. And I think you're really going to enjoy going and just playing around with these light leaks. So if you've enjoyed the video, again, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share it with all your friends, you know, all the good stuff. And for, oh, uh, if you do create these light leaks and do something amazing with them, I always forget to add this to the end of the videos, please. Upload it to Instagram. I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram. I am at tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D. I would love to see it. I'll go and I'll like it. I'll try to comment. I like to mix it up with you guys on Instagram. It's a lot of fun. We're creating some light leaks, some custom light leaks without a camera, not doing it the organic way, not arguably the right way to do it. And you can get some beautiful light leaks doing it the organic way, but rather doing it the digital way. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.